Hey, what is up everyone? Welcome back to another video and today I'm going to be trying to get more kits off the backlog. Three of them this time, all of which are Bandai's Batmobiles. These are 135th scale and I'm going to be going through these in order of priority. So I don't know how many I'm going to get done today. I'm going to get, well, as many as I can. And like I said, in order of priority. So I'm going to be going with the Tim Burton Batmobile first because, you know, it's the coolest. There it is in all of its glory. This kit has a whole bunch of opening hatches and bits and things that I can't wait to check out what it's like. There's everything that is inside of the box once you get it unboxed. And this one I'm definitely going to get finished. Up next on the list is this one right here. This, of course, is the Tumblr from the Dark Knight trilogy. Batman Begins in particular right here. Once again, full of tons of detail and all of Bandai's absolute plamo glory. Cannot wait to get this finished. There is what will be inside of this box. And finally, then we have this being the newest version of the Batmobile from The Batman, and it's got that real cool muscle car flair. There's another example bunch of images of what we'll be seeing inside of this box right here. And just in case you're new to model kits or just came to this video, out of interest for Batmobiles, all you need if you actually get one of these kits is a nipper to put together like what it says right here, which is one of these Yokuma Bobbies right here. And of course, this video right here would not have been possible without those absolutely awesome people over at Hobby Link Japan. So, as usual, link will be down there in the description. Now, let's get these built. So anyway, getting the box open and inside of it, this is what we got. So this gives you a general idea of just how big the Batmobile will be when finished. This apparently is 135th scale, and yeah, that's usual military scale if I'm not mistaken, for tanks and stuff like that. Got some clear parts in here too. Please tell me those wheels are actually rubber. Mmm, hard to tell. Maybe hard rubber. Tiny little manual in here, so if you're used to Bandai's Gunpla, this seems like it will be a whole lot simpler. Anyway, let's get her done. So I'm just after realizing that this says there's a color guide, and from what I can see right here, this plastic has absolutely no color whatsoever. So you will need paint for this. Same goes for the headlights right there. They should be in an orange. And what I'm actually going to try for that is a Sharpie. I don't know which will work, so let's test them out. All right, so Sharpie the first. Not that I can tell you what color this is because they don't write the colors on a Sharpie. Actually, that looks good. And then Sharpie. Now that's way too see-through. So I'm going to go with this one for the headlamps. So what you do with these is basically just color it in. Sharpie, Sharpie, Sharpie. And you'll keep your translucentness of the actual plastic parts. So that's the headlamps done. So next up in here, it does seem like there's a whole bunch of parts that do need some silver. Now, I'm not gonna go with the engine majigger here in the front of it, because you know, that's gonna be in there most of the time, so that's not so important. So I'm just gonna grab or get the parts on the side right here. And what I'm gonna try out is one of Bandai's Gundam markers. So these are just, you just, well, it's a paint marker. You just blob it on and you're good to go. This color right here is shining silver. So just shake the absolute shit out of it. Then just find the parts here in the instructions that actually make up this side part. So that is that A14, B24, etc. Then we seem to have this little bit majigger right here. That is B29. Let's get them silvered. And then basically with these markers, you just blob it all on there and nice, good covering of that there paint. And it really is just that simple. And there we go. These are kind of blobbed on good, you know, Paint quality level, McFarlane, but you know, it'll do. And there we go, there is on the other side as well, just kind of blobbed on, ready to be stuck on later on. All right, so according to the instructions right here, we start with the wheels and with some tires small. So these are actually rubberized, just very, very strong, nice rubber. So when it comes to the actual assembly here, it's both detailed and simple at the same time. So just pop that a little bit through that bit got the central aspect of the wheel right here. You just add some extra detail in there. Those two bits then just pop together. Tire then can just fit onto that. Push it in. Then you just hook this axle part on like that. Same onto the other side. So it looks like we're going to be having some moving front wheels here, which is pretty cool. Then you just get the main body of the vehicle here, the lower chassis part. Attach the wheels on into those pegs so you can kind of see where they'll be able to turn at that point. And then they just lock in with these wheel arch segments, just like so. That actually is pushing down on the wheel. After popping the other one on, this wheel is freely moving. This one seems to be getting a little bit on the squished side for some reason. Not sure as to why. 
Next up then when it comes to the wheels, for the rear back here, it's these guys. Three pieces, it pops together in the exact same way, so get that into the tire like this. You've got the rear axle and these two little bits right here. Pop in like that, that then feeds on through, locks in like that, and then the wheel right there on the other side. So far so good, and it kind of rolls. So next up in here we have all the parts that make up the, well, driving zone, cockpit, driver's seat, I don't even know what to call it. The console here should be in a kind of silvery color but it is not and I was too lazy to paint it because backlog killing time, but still looks pretty good and it's going to be, well, hidden for the most part. This kit right here is even so detailed you can see that this thing has manual transmission. Just sliding them down in there just like so. Gear stick into the middle right there. Both seats are identical, so that's one and two. Attach in the console. Whoops! Well, yeah, easy to know I drive on the uh, left-hand side of the road. Try and get that out of there <laughs> and get it onto this side. Last I checked, Batman is not from the UK or Ireland. Next up, we've got some clear pieces. Pop onto the back there. And then that last bit just pops on, just like so. There's the driving section, complete. Next up then we've got the three segments that make up the booster section. So this just attaches on like so. And this section right here for around that jet engine or whatever it's called, the Batman boost, which will forever remind me of that animated series intro. Forever pops on like that. So anyway, this then just slots down here. The cockpit section just pops in here, and there we go, that's pretty much the bones of the entire thing complete. The engine or jet thingamajig in the front, that is made up of these parts right here. Some absolutely teeny bits attach on just like so. And then this bit right here which should be in an actual silver, you just pop this bit on. The tip section just like so. And then this little tube which allows it to move in and out like a kind of weird. Uh, I'm just gonna say engine. Anyway, that bit just pops in, just like that. The canopy section, just two parts. They literally just pop together, simple as that, right there. And finally, then we do get to bust out the main piece in here, which is the main absolutely iconic body. Whoops, I almost completely forgot about these guys right here, which are the painted silver bits from beforehand. They just need to be popped on to the side, just like that and just like that. The upper body part then you finish off just by attaching the nose segment into the front just like that. Canopy then slides on. Fucking before that, let's see maybe I can just angle this in right now. There we go, looking good. And then that just pops over the top. Snap assembly, no glue needed absolutely perfectly just like so. All that's left now is the details. So finally we've got all of these bits right here including these bits you can probably not see which are the details to finish it all off. So we've got some fins which just pop up onto the back like that and like that. Covers which pop onto the front segments. There's that one there and then this one right here. The intakes or whatever they are that pop onto the sides. There's one. Over here then we have the other. Super simple. The headlights up front which we hit with the orange sharpie. There is one. There is number two. And man it shocks me every time just how well a sharpie works for coloring in clear parts. Keeping them clear and shiny. Lastly then we have a couple of detailed pieces that pop on. And to here I recommend gluing those. Those are tiny. And finally then we do have some lights for round back. These I did not color because again, trying to get through this backlog nice and quickly. And these, well, they're at the back of the Batmobile, which, well, will spend their entire life pointing at the back of a shelf. There we go. It is complete and it is gorgeous. Lastly then here we have some options. That is these grappling hook thingamajiggers. And we do have the machine guns for up front. The machine guns comprise of the machine gun an ammo belt then which attaches into this side just like so. Once again, probably needing a little bit of paint and then both attach on into this little piece 
just like that. So finally there is the first Batmobile finished and this is absolutely fantastic looking. This is actually a little bit larger than I expected it to be. It comes in at around, let me check right here, 17 centimeters in length, which apparently is about 6.69 inches. So it's not entirely huge, but it's a nice little model. We do have some nice gimmicks in here. The wheels can actually roll while you move it around. They can turn as well if you can turn the front one side to side you can pull that engine segment up front out like this and of course you're able to slide open the hatch right there into the driver's seat this is absolutely fantastic looking it is a little bit of a disappointment that a lot of this is all just cast in black well pretty much the whole thing is cast in black so you will need to bust out your silver paints in order to detail this up but still it looks absolutely phenomenal on to the next one so next on the chopping block, or should I say cutting mat, is the Batmobile from Batman Begins, which is the Tumbler. Now, from what we saw from the last one, it looks like we will be requiring some paint for these segments right here. This one actually looks like it'll be requiring some gold, so I've got a gold Gundam marker ready to go, and I found the silver last time was a little bit on the strong side, so I'm going to be going with the gunmetal this time. And in case you're wondering where I got these Gundam markers, it was Hobby Link as well, and it's this pack right here. These are the... Gundam marker, poo, that is not it. Scratch that, grabbing the wrong packet. It's from this one right here, the Gundam marker, and these are the Gundam Fine Edge set too. So these are for the, I think, mainly metallic. All metallic, and they're all great with a fine tip to do that fine tip warp cuh, that you need to do. All right, so cracking her open. Might actually be possible to get them all built today. So moving those parts out of the way. Some larger parts, some smaller parts, and this looks like it might be a little bit more intricate because we do have more runners in here. This manual as well, feeling a little bit more on the chunky side, like there's more folds to it. So this one looks like it will take a little bit longer, which does make sense. The tumbler is quite the, well, intricate design. Let's get her built. <coughs> Ooh, also a little bit of warning to those of you who usually build Bandai kits and are used to the way Bandai works. This is a kit that actually does require glue. That is rare with a Bandai kit, so make sure to bring your plastic cement or you're not gonna be finishing this bad boy off. Let's get her done. So without a single doubt, the parts in this particular kit are a lot smaller than what we would have seen before. So you do have a nice smoked out cockpit segment right there. And I mean, seriously, we've got some absolutely minuscule parts to attach on this kit. So, so small. Some tiny little parts which all look like different sorts of pistons and various little suspension aspects. And then finally that cockpit bit just attaches in there just like that. So once again, this looks like it will need some paint on all those various mechanical details in there. So next up then when it does come to the front wheels that we've gotten here, they all comprise of these five parts like this and there is a build order to this so you have to do it the right way or I don't know, maybe you'll screw something up. So you attach this onto the inner segment of the wheel, add this little bit of detail just round to the back like so. Make sure the tire is pointing the right way, you pop it on just the right amount and then you pop the inner segment into the tire as well just like that, simple as. So the detail on the inside of the, well, cockpit or whatever you'd call it inside of this Batmobile is not nearly as detailed as what we would have seen in the other one we just took a look at. It's just a pair of seats, that's all. They're just kind of hovering in there and nothing else. That little bit that we had just completed just slots onto the front like that right there. And then you just attach the wheels onto either side like so, and then like so. So as you can see, not so detailed in there at all. So next up then we've got the canopy. There's the front segment. Two of these little thingamajiggers for attaching onto the underside of that. Some more of that really cool smoky gray plastic. This just pops onto that just like so. So it's pretty much at this point right here that I realized that the parts that you're gonna have to paint are kind of speckled throughout the build and they're just attached to bits. They're not necessarily always gonna be a separate part. So pretty much if you do find a piston in here somewhere, that will need to be painted. Whoa, lost a fucking seat. 
So you might as well do that while you're putting it together. Same goes with these little parts up front. Those are meant to be in gold like so. And I found a couple of things on the runners as well that need to be painted in in gold as well. And there's one up here that needs a little bit of silver on the spring like that. Now I just painted these on the runner once again with these Gundam markers. These are super simple. They're very well mixed if you shake them up. They're designed to go directly onto plastic and they have great coverage even on very dark plastic like this. This is exactly what Bandai's designed them for. Just pump them, scribble on the paint, and you're pretty much done. Anyway, let's get this continued. So it's just the assembly of all of these parts to build up the core of the tumbler right here. So this canopy just pops on top like so. Next up then we have some side panels. There is one around to the other side. And there is the second. Next up then we've got some front panels which pop on in some what the same fashion. There's one side, then there is the second one. So really coming together now. Just going to gold up some of these pistons as I go along. Not sure if they need to be goldified, but they're looking to me like they want to be goldified. And there's all those parts put together and popping that on. Don't touch the gold. All right, so basically in the background there, I just got all the little kind of smaller aspects built because all of these bits you need to throw on these tiny, tiny little pistons. I painted some of them, didn't paint other ones. Basically, it comes down to visibility or the ones that I saw on the box that don't actually look like they're painted. So we've got these side segments here. I painted these little parts right here because they're gold on the box. This part attaches this bit then onto this side like so. Next up then we attach on these here side panels just like that. These are probably the hardest aspects to attach these tiny little pistony bits right here, especially the rear ones. Next up we got this part that pops in here just like so. So lots of panels and layers. Yet another panel layer bit. I have to say this is very not like a Bandai kit. This feels like something by another company. All the attachments aren't typical Bandai attachments. And this is definitely less like a Bandai kit than the Batmobile we just looked at. Continuing now onto the back end, on with that big springy segment, followed by that big jet part for round back. Once again, similar to the last Batmobile, and I will mention I did paint a little bit of this, that rim around the edge and whatnot. That is one thing that these markers are absolutely amazing for, because these aren't a brush, they're actually a plastic tipped pen doing Little segments like this is extremely easy because it's you just put the edge of the marker against it, run it the whole way around, and you're done. Two seconds flat. So the next part we need to be attaching are these tiny, tiny little pistons around back, which are going from the thruster right here to the back end. Now these do need to be glued. I did use some plastic cement to attach these on, and this is the first Bandai kit I have ever seen that actually required some glue. That's mad. Coming to the end of it now, and we've got the roof, which just pops on like so. This is actually made out of four parts. That is the roof itself, this bar across the top, and there is some tiny, tiny little bits you need to attach onto the inside of that. It doesn't say you need glue for those, but I would recommend that. Those, 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 it. I'd recommend. Glue them. Next up is the building of the rear tires. For each tire you need, or should I say for each wheel, you need two tires. And the assembly is simple as a plastic part into the rubber wheel like so. A central aspect to hold both together, another wheel on there like that, and then just finish it off like so. And then they just attach into this rear axle part like that, and like that, very simple really. And there it is, pretty much done, just one final piece. So finally the last parts that have to be done on this have to be glued, which are these aspects up here. Now, these are a little bit on the janky side, not because you have to glue them, not that I particularly like glue and parts on a model kit, but the part underneath them which attaches them, that should be glued while you're actually building this, but Bandai doesn't mention it in the instructions to actually glue this, so that means they'll actually move around underneath the aspects that need to be glued. So when it's gluing, you can move it by accident, and if that was actually glued into place, you get what I mean. Glue the part underneath, and it'll be less hassle in future, but it's done. 
So anyway, that right there is the Batmobile from Batman Begins, aka the Tumblr. Now this one is very strange in a lot of ways compared to the last Batmobile we took a look at. First off, this thing's a static nightmare. So I've got a lot of dog hair knocking around the place. I have two dogs, no matter how much we vacuum and everything, there's no getting rid of all of it. But this is gonna suck up every goddamn hair in the entire apartment without a doubt. They just float out of the air and attach to it. It feels extremely rubbery. It's not the same nice plastic that we saw in the last Batmobile. Now, if you had handed me this kit and told me this was a kit by Revel, I would believe you. Not that there's anything wrong with Revel kits, but any ones I've actually ever experienced, they do need a lot of gluing, they have small little attachments, sometimes they require drilling, this didn't need any drilling thankfully, but it doesn't feel like the just snap and put together Bandai kit that we'd be used to if you build a lot of Bandai kits. You do need to paint up some of the details yourself or it'll just be entirely in black. There are windows in it, but they're so smoked out black, grey, tinted, that they look like black parts too. So this is definitely one that needs a whole lot more effort. It does need a lot of gluing too, and in the end there are parts that still feel, well, extremely, extremely delicate. Also, the inside of the actual driving area on this has absolutely no detail. So this, so far, is definitely losing the battle to the last one we took a look at. So finally onto the last one now, and it's the Batmobile from the Batman, aka Batman's answer to the Pursuit Special. So this right here is that right there, and it looks like I'm going to need some red Sharpie for the lights, as well as some silver, very bright silver, for the engine round back. Let's get this out of here. So, this one actually has silver plastic. Well, that's interesting. So this one's actually color separated, unlike the last one. Also, we do have a lot more plastic inside of this box. I think Bandai. Bandai might be playing favorites right here. Finally then, here is the manual. Once again, extremely simple. Looking easy to do. And yeah, so far, this one looks really, really good. Hell, even the headlights or the rear lights right here, the brake lights, those, those are color separated as well. Damn Bandai, definitely playing favorites. So finally, when it does come to this Batmobile right here, this one is the best of the lot. I actually have to kind of speed through the build on this because I am running out of time, but this is the most impressive. First off, you start off by bin, well, building the entire engine block of this unit right here. This is impressive. There's so much detail, so many little bits and pieces, and the only thing that would actually make this look even better if you did actually paint this and chrome it out. I went with just what's inside the box so you can see what you get. It doesn't need to be painted, so I'll just show you what it looks like. This builds up so, so nicely, and it looks great. The rest of this Batmobile right here, well, it's just... This is the typical Bandai I expect. This is worlds apart from that tumbler we just looked at. Everything fits together perfectly, cuts out perfectly. This is color separated into multiple colors. I didn't realize it when I opened up the actual bags, but the A-Runner in here has some light gray... Well, like, well, it's dark gray, but it's light compared to the black on this. As well as, like what I mentioned, we've got the red brake lights around back. We've got the clear headlights up front, and everything just builds up nicely. We've got turning wheels up front. We've got a very nice console and dashboard inside of it. Great detail all around. We've got a roll frame that builds in on top of that. And then finally, all the armor goes on outside of it. We've even got a pair of windscreen wipers on the outside, which is pretty similar to what we would have seen as well on the Tim Burton style Batmobile. But yeah, everything just fits perfectly. Nothing is too delicate, no glue needed, no paint needed really. And this thing just works out so, so well. But anyway, as for where I am right now, I'm on the wheels and these are super soft rubber compared to what we would have seen before. These are all different, so it tells you which wheel to build, as in front wheel left, front wheel right, rear wheel left and right. So I'm keeping these separated so they don't get mixed up. Finally then we have the wheels from this and the details are incredible. We actually have the disc brakes in underneath those. You motherfucker! Anyway, uh, and speaking of the wheels on this, they are very detailed. Underneath those we do have the actual disc brakes. We've got some exhaust segments from the side right here, and then the wheels themselves just pop on like so. This is a simple build with so much payoff. 
And there is the Batmobile from the Batman. This one, by and by, actually by far, is the best of the bunch. This is out and out a Bandai kit. It's got a color separated A Runner, which even if you don't know about Bandai kits, I can just tell you, when you get an A Runner in a Bandai kit or an A Sprue, it always has a whole bunch of different colors on it. All the color separation for a kit, even a simple one, is on that runner. And that is the case here. We've got some light gray, some clear red, on top of the black that we have in here, we've got Injection Silver 2 for the whole engine block, as well as the details on this. However, Injection Silver plastic never looks the greatest. I always recommend actually painting up the silver just to get that nice chromed out real metallic feel. But even if you're ignoring that, or even if you're even taking that into consideration, it's a lot easier to spray some parts while they're still on the runner for a quick and easy build when all the silver parts are just on one. So you could do that. The build is super simple. What you get in the end is very, very nice. Some clear red on top of the black that we have in here. We've got Injection Silver 2 for the whole engine block, as well as the details on this. However, Injection Silver Plastic never looks the greatest. I always recommend actually painting up the silver just to get that nice chromed out real metallic feel. But even if you're ignoring that, or even if you're even taking that into consideration, it's a lot easier to spray some parts while they're still on the runner for a quick and easy build when all the silver parts are just on one. So you could do that. The build is super simple. What you get in the end is very, very nice. Yeah, it's good, good kit. And finally, there is all three of them side by side. This really makes you realize how small the tumbler is. I always had the feeling that it was big, kind of like a sort of tank, but it's quite the small little vehicle. Now, if I was to rank these right now from best to worst, without a doubt in the worst position would be the tumbler. This does not feel like Bandai built it at all. Feels very rubbery, needs a lot of painting, a lot of gluing. There's not much detail on the interior. And in the end, even though you get a very nice little model, it does feel a little plain. It's gonna need a lot of detailing up to look cool. In second place, which I thought was gonna be number one personally, is the Tim Burton Batmobile. This thing looks absolutely phenomenal, will always remind me of the animated cartoon which I absolutely adored, and this just looks awesome. Once again, there is some painting required here, the silver parts as well as the clear orange in the headlights will need to be painted. But besides that, it is a very nice detailed model with a detailed interior and underside. I'll also mention the tumbler does not have a detailed underside, it's just block, just a big plastic block. And then finally, in the number one spot, which I did not expect, is the Batman. I suppose it's the newest Batmobile of the bunch here, so Bandai must have put extra effort into it. It's got way more color separation going on, it's just an outright beautiful model, and it puts together perfectly, all the parts are separated nicely, it's got so much detail on that engine round back, and it just is the superior kit by a long margin. You get a finished model right out of the box. No extra added at all. So once again, as always, thank you so, so much for watching. Make sure to come back for more model kit reviews. If you want any of these, I got them through Hobby Link Japan, link in the description, and I will see you next time.